Hi, I'm Gunnar Englund. I'm a Swedish birder living in Peru. I've been guiding birders for over 30 years. 23 years ago, I started my company, Colibri Expeditions, in Peru, directed towards traditional birders. However, a few years ago, I also started an offshoot called Seven Wonders Birding in an attempt to adapt to the new type of birding and bird photography that is becoming more and more prevalent in recent years in the digital age and the age of social media. It seems most uh, bird tour operators are providing services to old school birders. We offer a new approach to birding, which is suitable for all type of birders, bird photographers, newbies and non-birding spouses. In short, we could call this bucket list birding. The title of this presentation is Birding for Everyone. How does Colibri Expeditions provide more inclusive birding tours? How can birding tours be adapted so they are not too overwhelming for beginners, yet sufficiently focused on the specific targets of the destination, being that birds, mammals or world heritage sites? This will be explained in the next few minutes. You are probably familiar on how neuroscience popularly divides the human brain in a left side that corresponds to science, logic, math and analytical traits, while the right side of the brain is responsible for the aesthetics, colors, imagination, dreams and beauty. While people in general have aspects of both brain halves, many people are dominated by one of the two. We can also classify different aspects of birding on the left brain, right brain theory. Have a look. Left brain activities include listing, studying behavior or being involved in bird conservation. All activities within the science realm. The obsession of listing and taxonomy has to do with math and analytical organization. Right brain aspects of birding include appreciating the beauty of birds, often up close when feeding the birds or when taking pictures of them. Also the meditative and healing properties of birding or the social aspects of enjoying nature with kids are right side brain properties. To get into birding 15 to 20 years ago, it was pretty much a left brain activity. There was scientific precision and very high initial threshold to get over to start birding. You needed binoculars, a field guide and a notebook to scrap down the bird names or write down a description and make a drawing in order to ID a bird. It was hard. Photography was prohibitory expensive before digital. It was difficult to know the ID of a bird for certain so one needed to have a mentor or one had to join a bird club in order to make correct identification. In short, it was not easy to get into birding and it was not mainstream and it was even regarded as somewhat nerdy. This has of course changed a lot today. It is easy to get into birding. There is a very low bar to the entry point. To start there is not even need to have a field guide, join a bird club or even have binoculars. Everyone has a camera in their pockets these days. The best phones have impressive zoom functions and serious photography has become inexpensive with mega zoom point and shoot cameras and digital SLRs. With an internet connection one can post pictures of birds on Facebook and Instagram and ask friends or specialized groups for the identification. As people share photographs of beautiful birds it rubs off to newbies and the general public, resulting in that more want to pursue the hobby to watch and take pictures of birds. The focus of the birding world today is shifting from principally left brain scientific approach to birding to be more about the right brain aesthetics of birds. It is becoming mainstream and extremely popular. On this picture from Beijing, China, hordes of local birders are photographing a lost Eurasian robin. Note there are no binoculars. All over the world people are getting into birds. Birding is no longer only a North American and European hobby. The challenge for a tour operator like us is how to adapt to these new trends and how to provide services to this new immense segment of new birders that value aesthetics more than a life list. Traditional birding tours are just too long and too intense. They focus on getting you as long list of birds seen as possible. These tours are totally unsuitable for beginners and non-birding spouses. Colibri Expedition's new concept, exemplified by the tours of Seven Wonders Birding, solved many of these problems. 
with very short tours to spectacular places focusing on a bucket list of birds and iconic mammals. Hence newbies and non-birding spouses don't get bored and there is time to do other things before and after the tours. We give photography tips and it is not all about birds. These tours are also very suitable for serious birders who have very little time available, either because of the short holiday windows in the US but also because of the fast-paced information flow in tech and economics of today, which makes it impossible to take long holidays and stay disconnected from work more than a week at a time. Even with four to five weeks of allowed vacation time per year, one can't be away for three weeks and expect to arrive to an empty desk after the holiday. Either there are three weeks of work accumulated or someone else is sitting at your desk. Let's have a look at the sample of the tours that we offer around the world. Let's start with the spectacular places your non-birding spouse wants to visit, like the new Seven Wonders and the World Heritage sites. Practically all can be combined with excellent birding. Many of our tours are just five days, so you fly in one weekend from anywhere in the world, then make the tour Monday to Friday and fly back the following weekend, if that is all the time you have. Our concise birding Egypt tour is seven days to fit in Giza pyramids, all the other historical sites in Egypt and a Nile cruise while birding morning and afternoons. Giant painted snipe and Senegal thickney are two of our targets. We also offer an extension to Petra in Jordan, which is one of the new seven wonders. Here the birding include Sinai rosefinch, fantail raven and dead sea sparrow. China with the Great Wall, the Terracotta Army and the Forbidden City can also be visited in five days, while also visiting areas for the threatened Crested Ibis and Golden Stub-Nosed Monkey. A five-day tour in India gives you a great chance to spot a tiger in Ratambora National Park, excellent birding such as the immense Saurus Crane in the Bharatpur wetlands and of course the Taj Mahal. The Yucatan gives a full week birding with many localized endemics and beauties such as the photogenic flamingos, Yucatan jay and oscillated turkey, as well as the Maya pyramid of Chichen Itza, another of the new seven wonders. The eternal city of Rome provides excellent cultural features with the Colosseum, the Forum and Michelangelo's masterpieces in the Vatican. Three days of the five are dedicated to the city while the fourth and fifth day takes us birding in the Abyssinian mountains for the rare rock partridge and the coast for shearwaters and Sardinian warbler. Extensions are offered to Tuscany and Camacho. Christ Redeemer statue of Rio de Janeiro was promoted heavily in Brazil as a nominee for the new Seven Wonders and made the list in spite of being quite modern. Rio is regardless a beautiful city with birding opportunities in Tijuca National Park and the Botanical Gardens and is then combined with the impressive Iguazu Falls which also provides good birding with for instance Tokitukan and Plush Cap J. The absolutely most popular of the new Seven Wonders was Machu Picchu in Peru. It also provides excellent birding in a five-day tour with Cock of the Rock, Torrent Duck and Andean Condor possible. Other World Heritage sites that we make five-day tours to include Angkor Wat in Cambodia with the endangered white-shouldered ibis in Great Ibis, the Maya site of Tikal in Guatemala combined with pink-headed warbler and horned guan in the highlands, and Alhambra in Granada, Spain where we are within striking distance of Iberian lynx and many raptors including Lammergeier, Spanish Imperial Eagle and Royal Eagle. We also build five-day tours around iconic mammals such as the tour to Borneo with proboscis monkey and orangutan and birds such as the endemic bird family Bornean bristlehead and several species of photogenic broadbills and hornbills. Seven days in the Pantanal with almost guaranteed jaguar, tapir and giant otter as well as a good chance of seeing giant anteater and ocelot as well as the big hyacinth macaw, the largest and perhaps most beautiful of the macaws. Other large and special birds that we see on this trip include agami heron, boat-billed heron, jabiru stork, sun bittern and many more. Since the birds are large and colorful 
and easy to photograph, this is an ideal trip for anyone who is just getting into birds. It may sound impossible, but you can actually see the most important animal features of Australia in just five days. By combining Tasmania with areas around Melbourne, we see koala, grey kangaroo, platypus, Tasmanian devil, echidna and wombat, plus a number of birds such as little penguin and all the Tasmanian endemics in this limited time. Sometimes bucket list birds and mammals play the same importance, like in Uganda, where the five-day itinerary includes shoebill, gorilla and chimpanzee, and a number of endemic Rift Valley birds. Another tour, such as the five-day winter Japan trip to Hokkaido, we get wonderful opportunities to see and photograph the majestic Stellar's Eagle, Blackiston's Fish Owl, Japanese red-crowned crane and whooping swan. This tour also includes a bullet train excursion to see the snow monkeys having a bath in the hot springs near Nagano. Well, it is uh, Peru that is our base. What if we applied the same concept of short trips to Peru? Which would be the itineraries? What would be the best birds? What are Peru's main attractions? I have selected three five-day tours that we can run every week throughout the year with a minimum of two people. If you put the itineraries back to back, well, you have a 15-day tour with the best birds and the culture of Peru. The Machu Picchu program can be adapted to include the luxurious Machu Picchu Pueblo Hotel with cock of the rock on the grounds and excellent for bird photography. The northern Peru five-day route is also extremely diverse. Over 40 species of hummingbirds can be seen and photographed in this limited time. Short tours are also very good for targeting bird families. Many listeners have realized that seeing all of the world's birds are not possible for most mortals in one lifetime. But the 250 or so bird families, depending on taxonomy, are very feasible. Seven Wonders Birding already have made trips to Australia and New Zealand to uh, maximize unique bird families. 2022 we shall also introduce Madagascar and New Guinea for the people who collect bird families. For Peru we have the following bird families with chance to see on the five day tours. In the north Marignon crescent chest and oil bird. In the south we have uh, screamers like horned screamers, gnat eaters like slaty gnat eater, pale winged trumpeter, sun grebe of the finfoot family, sun bittern, rufous vented ground cuckoo, well, with a lot of luck in Manu maybe, and the prehistoric looking Huatzin. Most tourists coming to Peru do so for the rich archaeological history, such as the Nazca Lines in the Peruvian desert, the Inca citadel of Machu Picchu close to Cusco, or the Titicaca Lake of the Altiplano on the border of Bolivia. In recent years, the Peruvian food has taken the world by storm, and the flagship meal is, of course, the ceviche, lime marinated raw fish served with Spanish peppers coriander and red onion with corn and sweet potato on the side. Let's have a look at the more iconic birds we find in these three tours. Here are two birds from the north, the marvelous spatula tail and the long whisked owlet. The marvelous spatula tail makes display between November to May. Here captured by Dustin Chen who was trapped in northern Peru at Wembo Lodge when Peru was shut down at the onset of the pandemic. A fantastic place to be trapped at. He managed to capture a nice series of this leg. The spatula tail waves with the spatules down and up while blue crown flashes to impress the female. The cock of the rock in the Cotinga family is the national bird of Peru. The mighty condor, the symbol of the Andes and one of the largest flying birds in the world with a wingspan of 3.3 meters and a maximum weight of 15 kilos. To show you that Peru has birds that certainly also would impress non-birders, here is a sample of tanagers. They are golden tanager, paradise tanager, golden colored tanager, scarlet bellied mountain tanager. Peru is one of the best countries to observe hummingbirds. Here is just a sample of what can be found at the hummingbird feeders. Amethyst woodstar, royal sun angel, sword-billed hummingbird 
and Rufus Crescent Coquette. Finally, you will pass through Lima. There is good birding here too, and uh, well worth to add a day or two in order to see Inca turn on the coast, or perhaps go up into the mountains to get close to 16,000 feet to see the dainty but uh, beautiful diadem sandpiper plover. Thanks for your attention. If you like this presentation, please share it with others. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me by email or by WhatsApp uh, on either website colibriexpeditions.com or sevenwondersbirding.com. You can learn more about our tours and sign up for our newsletters. Thank you.